delegation. Delegation is a task that nurses do fairly frequently, and it's something that is assessed on the NCLEX. You know, when the NCSBN determines what are they going to put on the NCLEX, what are we going to write questions about? You know, they send a practice analysis out to thousands and thousands of nurses all across the country, and they ask them, what are they doing? And these are new graduate nurses, right? These are people that just took the NCLEX within the past year or two years. And they ask these new new graduate nurses, what are you doing? And how frequently are you doing it? And how important are those tasks? And one of the things that new graduate nurses do is they delegate. They delegate different tasks to unlicensed assistive personnel, so UAPs, as they're called on the NCLEX, and to um, LPNs or PNs, as sometimes they're called, not, not peons, PNs, PNs, practical nurses, right? And this is something that almost all new graduate nurses do in one way or another, okay? So immediately your first day on their job, you are responsible for delegating responsibility to different people. So there's certain things that you cannot delegate as an RN to a PN or an LPN, okay? Number one is you cannot delegate starting an IV. Now, are there LPNs that can start IVs if they're IV trained? Then, yeah, there are. But on the NCLEX, the answer is no. Uh, hanging or mixing IV meds cannot be done by an LPN. Number three, evaluating an IV site. LPNs cannot evaluate an IV site. Number four, giving IV push medications. LPNs cannot give a blood transfusion. And LPNs cannot perform a discharge assessment, an admission assessment, transfer assessment, the first assessment after any change in patient condition. Okay, so can LPNs do assessments? Yes, but they can't do the first or the last um, before, you know, after a patient arrives to a floor or after a change in condition or right before they're discharged to go home or discharged as in transferred to um, another unit in the hospital or in another facility. Number seven, you cannot delegate the planning of care to an LPN. And an LPN cannot develop or perform teaching. The LPN can review the teaching with the client after we've already taught them. The LPN can answer questions, can clarify, can, can show them and review and reinforce, but they cannot do the original teaching or develop the teaching. Then lastly, number nine, uh, LPNs cannot take verbal orders from a doctor, and they can't transcribe orders. Right. So basically, LPNs are not supposed to do the first of anything, um, except for giving meds. So they can give the first calcium channel blocker or the first Nexium um, or um, you know, other, other medication. They can do the first meds, but they cannot do the first of anything that involves teaching or um, training or evaluating, um, or assessing. They can't do the first, okay? So for the uh, NCLEX, LPNs are med certified, but not IV certified. In your unit, they might be IV certified, but again, not on the NCLEX. Now, that's for LPNs. How about UAPs, okay? unlicensed assistive personnel? These are your patient care techs, um, your nurse aides, Right. These are people who do not have license. They have certifications usually, um, you know, a CNA, certified nursing, nursing aide or nursing assistant. Um, you know, they have certifications, but they're not licensed. Okay, the state does not license them. So they cannot perform charting. Now, they can document what they did, but they can't chart. They can't do assessments, but they can monitor vital signs um, and finger stick blood sugar are two things that aides can do on the NCLEX. You know, at my facility, aides can draw blood, they can do all kinds of other stuff, but for the NCLEX, they cannot assess except for vital signs and finger stick blood sugar. Uh, you cannot delegate the administration of medications or IVs, but they can uh, apply topical lotions and creams. 
and they're not allowed to do enemas except for soap suds. So a tech can give a soap suds enema, but not a fleets enema. Soap suds enema is not a medication. Fleets is. Okay. Um, you the things that you can delegate to UAPs are all the ADLs, right? Activities of daily living. So bed uh, bed changes, linen changes, um, baths. Um, assisting the patient to the um, bedside commode or to go wash their hands, walking the patient in the hallway. These are things that you can delegate. And then lastly, for delegation to the family, there are things that you cannot delegate to the family, and that is safety-related items. Okay, You do not want to delegate safety-related items to the, the family. So the family can only do what you personally teach and document that you've taught them to do. Okay, so you have to teach and document. Family members can only do what you personally teach and document that you've taught them to do. So now you're on the NCLEX taking questions, and a question asks you, um, a client's family member asks you if you can remove the restraints from uh, their, uh, from the client so because the family member agrees to monitor them and make sure that they're safe. Are you allowed to... Are you allowed to do this if a family member is willing to watch? Right? Well, the answer is no, okay? Um, because think about it this way. We would not have restrained that client in the beginning if somebody could have monitored them to keep them safe while being unrestrained. Right? We w you remember, you always use the least invasive or the least restrictive method possible. And so if they could have just been monitored by a sitter, if a sitter could have handled it, then we would have used a sitter and we wouldn't have restrained them to begin with. Okay, so that's a tricky kind of situation. Um, so remember, um, you know, you cannot release the restraints on a client just because the family member agrees to monitor them. All right, and if that's the case, then we should not have restrained them to begin with. Okay, so that's a, a good overview of delegation for LPNs assistive personnel, and family members. Make sure you're comfortable with this because this is information that pretty much all new graduate nurses know, so you need to understand this information as well. This subject pretty much everyone's familiar with, and you need to have a really good grasp of what you can and cannot delegate.